Hi, I'm Chana Blankenship. I am an SLP at Tier Memorial Hermann here in Houston, Texas. Um, I've been practicing for eight years and um, I've been with the ITZY group for about two, Karen, I think, one or two. Yeah. Yeah, a hot minute. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's about it. <laughs> it's like, when did we start this US IRG? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It all all melts together. <laughs> it does, especially through COVID. We just lost like this whole time. <laughs> yeah. All right. And you're. And I can invite. Me. I can invite myself. I can introduce myself next. My name is Amanda Weisberg. I live in Dallas, Texas. I work in acute care. I work PRN. Uh, when I'm not working, then I'm a mom. <laughs> and obviously, I have this Instagram platform where I like to share bite-sized information of education with a little twist of humor. It's kind of how I explain things. Yeah. So uh, that's good. That's, that's how we all roll here. <laughs> that's great. And, and I'm Karen yeah. Scheffler from yeah. SwallowStudy.com. Yeah. And I started Swallow Study in 2014. Um, I've been an SLP since 1996. <laughs> I can date myself with all you millennials out there. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I've worked in long-term care in home health and now I've been in acute care since 1999. And, uh, and so I still do per diem. I'm at the Beth Israel. Um, but primarily I work for myself, which is the key to life. <laughs> I have a, a wonderful 15 year old son. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I ended up just adding Laura through her personal account because the lovely. account is yeah. glitching. So Sounds we'll figure good. It out There's lovely Laura. Well, we might as well start. Hello, Laura. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I was on <laughs> Etsy and then it flipped back to my personal one. So I apologize. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah. Laura, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We already did the others. Uh, oh, my turn. Okay, I'm Laura Brooks. I'm a pediatric <laughs> SLP at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, and I work in the pediatric ICU, the TICU, cardiac unit, neonatal ICU, acute care floors. We do modifieds, fees, um, and I do a lot of work. Majority of what I do is dysphagia. Um, do a lot of trach vent, passing your valve stuff as well. And I'm so excited to be here for ITSI. I am part of the communications um, committee, uh, co-lead for the communications committee for the USIRG. And then I co-lead the international um, pediatric committee with Jan Dubestein from Canada. And um, we also created a US, a PEDS USIRG for just our yeah, pediatric grades. So thank yeah. you all for being here. Yeah, we should here say, with the USIRG, so we, we, keep, we keep saying this, these talk. letters, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's the United States ITSI Reference Group. Um, so like I'm on the um, committee with Laura and China, the um, Communication Advocacy Committee, but then I'm also on the, um, the Resources and Best Practice Committee. We have four different committees and you can learn about that in the handout that, that, uh, that we'll give you later. <laughs> Perfect. So we'll just go ahead and dive into it. And I think what's important is I know when I was entering the hospital system, uh, people just assumed I knew what ITSI was and stood for it when I barely <laughs> even knew what NPO stood for. So <laughs> that's why I'm like, I wish someone would have given me the education. So that's why we're here today. Um, and I think what's important about ITSI is we are giving an international way that we all can speak the same language about liquid consistencies that's and great. solid consistencies. Uh, so Karen, do you want to kind of summarize? Yeah. And I was thinking, ITZY? you know, we could maybe even share like what we love the most about ITZY because that also will help explain what ITZY is. But yeah. primarily I wanted to say that like ITZY started all the way back in 2013 when people got together at a conference and just were like, wouldn't it be great to like speak the same language globally? Like that's what's really amazing is that the whole world got together to form a consensus about all foods and liquids and and it's just it's remarkable 
uh, a sort of a beacon of hope right now to have this global wave of consensus when when everything else feels like it's breaking apart, you know. So um, and then ASHA and the AND, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, they officially supported it for launch and actually to to get it going and to have all of us in the U.S. implement it May first of 2019, believe it or not. But then COVID hit, <laughs> so so our launch date in 2019 got kind of messed up with with you know a lot of hospitals having to just switch gears you know from from implementing itsy to to surviving through covid but um but so now you know we're we're back at it the us irg formed in 2020 kind of end of 2020 um to really help the us you know just figure out the implementation answer questions we're starting to like create like a whole faq you know um to to answer your questions so things like this are just great and and uh, it's it's just but yeah, one of my favorite things is just this global wave. And also we'll talk a lot about playing with food, which, <laughs> which uh, another favorite of mine, but yeah. Perfect. Laura, do you want to talk about kind of maybe how you got into it and what you love about it? Yeah. Um, so I got into it as part of the USIRG and, um, and then the, the cool thing about it is it kind of, it's this evolving thing. It feels like, oh my gosh, it's been 10 years, but it really is like in, in its clinical fellowship. It's like just getting off the ground. We're like just getting started and we're evolving and changing. And like they even changed, you know, like level seven, which you'll hear about later. Um, they're like, oh, there's this like gap between six and seven. Let's break down seven and make that make sense. So then they just changed the pyramid um, to make it make the most sense. So that's what's so cool. And then the head of ITSE is like, God, I feel like this the pediatric issues are so different than adult issues. Why don't you guys form your own pediatric US group and we'll give it an email and we'll give it a name and you guys can just take it and fly. And then um, let's, let's make this international too and learn from people in Spain and um, you know, New Zealand. Like what are you picking your liquids with? What do you guys do with, with breast milk? Um, so that's what's been really cool um, for me is just learning from other people and getting together and kind of um, being a sounding board, but stuff like this is the best because we get our ear to the ground from doing things like that. And, you know, people hearing from you, that's like, God, you know, I'm at this huge children's hospital and we're not even implemented at all. And you're like, okay, never fear. It's still early. At, le <laughs> at least you can do syringes. You know, you can at least do flow testing. We can get you started there. So um, that's what's been really cool about it is it's just this huge support system. And so we just really appreciate your time. And I have them ready with a pen. I have um, pen and paper. We're ready to write down some questions. And anything we can't answer tonight, you message us, email us, and we'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Perfect. China, do you want to go ahead and talk about how you got involved? And then also, I don't know if you want to just briefly kind of go over. Yeah, so um, well. about two and a half years ago, I felt like there was a huge discrepancy from like when we send patients home from the hospital, like, what does this diet mean? What do I do with this diet? And how do I make it like functional at home? Because I don't want to have to make a completely separate meal for my family member. Um, so I started toying with the idea of my blog made by China to like really take recipes that I use at home and show how easy it is to make them dysphagia diet friendly using the ITSY levels. And so as I was like creating this, um, I got in contact with Laura and Katrina and they were just like, so excited, uh, just like kept talking to me, everything itsy and asked me if I wanted to uh, join their communication advocacy committee. And so I like just like jumped it jumped in head first and we were working really closely with Laura and Karen and Katrina and just everybody on the team just really trying to spread the word about itsy and really help people understand that itsy is meant for us to be to be used as a framework to help us to help us with discussions, different levels of care. Like if I have a patient who goes back to California, the SLP is gonna know exactly what I'm talking about right. because I'm using easy terminology and it's universal for us all to use. Um, and then um, to touch on your second part, Amanda, the levels. So um, Laura touched on this a little bit. So we have levels one through seven. Um, level seven is Karen with her perfect pyramid for me zero, zero to seven um, zero to sorry seven. sorry you blew zero, zero to seven level it's backwards zero sorry seven um level one was actually uh introduced for our pediatric patients and laura can talk more about that and then as she mentioned earlier level seven was actually divided into two 
So it starts with level zero in our liquids with thin, one being slightly thick, two being mildly thick, or what most of us commonly know as nectar, and then three being moderately thick, or what we all commonly knew before ITC as honey thick. Um, and that kind of transitions into our level four, um, which is extremely thick. And that more kind of, and for me, extremely thick is like those really thin purees. Those like, they're not quite yet, they're not quite honey, but they're not quite yet a puree. They're kind of like floating in that middle. Um, then we jump into our solids for the rest of the pyramid. So we have level four is pureed. Um, level five is minced and moist, or as I commonly knew it as a uh, mechanical ground. Um, then we jump to level six, which is soft and bite size, or previously I knew it as chopped, advanced chopped. And then we have level seven divided into two, which is um, easy to chew or like a soft texture. And then level seven regular, which is just your everyday normal foods. <laughs> Perfect. I know. No, I was like, like yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 but they like Karen came in real quick. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, I, I forgot about the level zero. And, and you were reading backwards too, so that was really good. Right. I was like you trying know? to flip it around, but I'm, you know, it's like, oh well, you read it backwards, great. Mom. <laughs> I had to make a, I had to make a badge buddy because every time I was like documenting, like after you do it a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. you start to kind of just pick it up. Um, but I need my badge buddy to, in order to like do it That's quickly. Um, and so actually with the, too. you know, now that we're not in grad school, yeah, we yeah, to memorize yeah, anything, yeah. we promise. <laughs> the names too, since we're on the specific name topic here, um, when you go to the ITSI website, um, and you scroll down, you'll see all these different country names. And when you click on United States, it'll take you to the United States resources. And we made a PowerPoint that tells you kind of how to document this terminology because ITSI Global started just kind of saying, okay, level four and expecting that everybody kind of knew like to lead with the word, the number, you know, level four and expect that somebody knows what level four is. It's like, I can't memorize that. So the United yeah. States, we just, we determined that our sort of best practice way of saying these is to lead with the word like puree comma level four. Um, so when you're documenting it or when you're giving a presentation in it, um, this presentation on our United States chart, um, it's all about how to, to use the terminology. Um, so it's, it's in one of the, um, the webinar lists, you'll see it like terminology best practice. Um, but yeah, so basically you're, you're leading with the words so that we don't have to memorize the numbers. <laughs> um, and then, you know, comma level four. So, um, and then also there's approved abbreviations that that, um, PowerPoint goes over. Um, so when your computer system wants you to put in abbreviations, it's good to use the, it's the appro approved abbreviations <laughs> so yeah just a side note there perfect and uh someone had said can you help me with thickening soda Ooh. to a level two Ooh. anybody Ooh. have a trick <laughs> soda is <laughs> tough to thicken um well because i will say with powder thickener mm -hmm. it's yeah. like fizzes Bubbles. don't get, get me started on the chemistry of it that is not i <laughs> chemistry is not my thing um but i mm -hmm. have used a gel but i think we're going to touch on this too so speak for me if i'm wrong but when in doubt test it out when in doubt, doubt test, test it out, it out right? exactly test yeah. it out so <laughs> i haven't really had that fizzing problem with the gel um but the, with the powder i do have the fizzing problem so it takes me like 10 yeah. minutes to thicken it well, and I mean, it just wasn't worth it anymore the powder first um, well and yeah. i think the powder second so I added it second. No, so my, my little trick it, that I've but... learned is that you like, it's like a baking thing. You have to like put the powder in first there. and then you slowly <laughs> stir and add the liquid at the same time. Ooh. So it doesn't get clumpy Ooh. and then it thickens faster. Yeah. 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 And it seems Ooh. like some of the xanthan like gum it. type thickeners and, and for, do better that way. Like, you know, yeah. put the liquid or put the powder in first and then just add the liquid slowly while you're really whisking. Yeah. Um, but the gel based ones, do you, do you guys find that the, the bubbles, the fizziness of the soda maintains itself with, with those two strategies? Um, I feel like I still get a little bit of that pop from the fizz. I never it's not like whenever you have a, like a fresh Coke or Dr. Pepper. 
Um, but I like yeah. find that you still get like a little bit of like that, that pop that you like from a soda. Yeah. 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 Cause you stir yeah. the carbonation away. That's I feel like tough. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like a little caught in like, um, and stirring bubbles. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess our comprehensive answer is try putting the thickener on the bottom and going from and there. Or even the trying, thickener. if you do fees, <laughs> this is the easiest trying to test your patients with a carbonated liquid that's thin liquid. Mm -hmm. um, there was a study, and I'm not going to remember the author right off the top of my head, sorry. Um, there is a study out there that you can Google about carbonated liquids that, um, that you know, people have less aspiration with carbonated liquids because it's giving you so much more of a sensory experience mm -hmm. and, yeah. and maybe triggering your motor output better. So, so yeah, so potentially, you know, not restricting the person and keeping them on the, the thin <laughs> carbonated liquid, whereas the other types of liquid maybe they'll, you know, um, choose to have the, the thicker liquid. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we went over what it is, went over the visuals. And then Karen, do you want to talk about um, other resources that they can use? Like the one -on -one, Yeah, there's YouTube just channel, so many resources, which it's the hardest thing because it's, you know, on my blogs, like people, if you've read my blogs, they're like ad nauseum, you know, just kick back with a big like glass of wine or your favorite cocktail because my blogs are really long. So every time I set out to do a blog, I'm like, I'm going to do an itsy update blog. Here's like the five like new exciting itsy updates, but then it becomes really long too. So so that's the thing is like Itzy has so many great resources and it's hard to like impart them to people without overwhelming them because I've been involved with Itzy since 2014. So to me, it's like the back of my hand, like, oh, this is fine. But, but I always worry, like, like when we talked about this at our, our USIRG meeting, talked about this actual live event, we're like, we have to really realize that, that we have like, you know, this, this sort of, what, how did we put it? The, um, that we're all sort of like experts on it. And we have to just like keep in mind that, that other people mm -hmm. might not be at that same level. But um, so the one neat thing with this thing tonight and, and uh, Amanda can let us know, um, I think on your link tree at the top of your, your uh, Instagram page, um, you have a PDF that we put together. So the PDF is going to look like the one that I was holding up, um, just the, the itsy helpful links. Um, so it's several pages <laughs> of helpful links um, and it goes through many things. One of the things um, that it goes through is the United States. Um, sorry, that's backwards, but you kind of see the, the little symbols here. Um, it's the United States country specific resources because ITSI is such a global thing. We in the United States ITSI reference group are trying to make sure that we're answering questions that people have right here in the United States, like Jello. Like, what the hell is Jello? And Jello is different in the U.S. versus everywhere else. Um, and so there is on our um, United States chart of resources. It's just itsy.org backslash United States um, or United dash states. Um, when you go to that chart, you'll see lots of, of great resources we have there. And like you said, there's 101s, 201s, and those webinar trainings that we have on there, they have competencies with them. So if that's one of the things that, that you're kind of struggling with when you're training staff, um, you can prove that you've trained staff by having them complete the competencies and things like that. So, um, and then also, of course, it's the um, main website has the resources tab, lots of resources in there. There's an it's a YouTube YouTube channel. There's an ITSY app you can download. Um, and then you can always go to ITSY, contact us, and you'll see the link for um, signing up for eBytes and everything. So if you can, you can keep, uh, keep connected. The February eByte just came out today with brand new information that the funnels are available. The brand new ITSY funnels. We'll, we'll get into that topic today. Um, yeah. So lots of, yeah. And you can follow us on Instagram and we will update you um, all throughout the week on new things. And if you have anything to share, you let us know and we'll, we'll be happy to post it. So we want our Instagram content to be really practical and really relevant. So definitely um, follow us on Instagram. It's the IDVSI. And, um, and we can, and you can volunteer too. Perfect. You exactly. can jump in and volunteer on, and join our committees. Yeah. Join our committees. 
Well, funny story. There was a dietitian who, who emailed our best practice, and and she was asking, you know, how do I rate this Jello? How do I describe Jello at my my place? And we're like, well, join best practices, and you can help us write the answer to that FAQ. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, like months later, we finally put out the perfect. FAQ, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, organic yeah. acquiring. I like it. Um, to show yeah, that, so to we, say that Jello is just right. Jello is just wild and unpredictable, and it's what you think Jello is going to be. Like it's just slippery. Yeah. It's going to be scary. Uh, it blew our minds. It we thought, right? I, I mean, you know, I've been in this field since the '90s, so I always thought that Jello was like, oh, we don't give Jello because it thins out to a thin liquid. That was like, and you know this is what we have to constantly be doing in our field. Like the things that we've always known, like bust that and figure out something new because for years mm -hmm. we were always like, Oh, jello thins out to a thin liquid. And we tested so many different types of jello, even homemade jellos and product jellos and all these different things. And we tried the transitional food test to see, you know, is jello really a transitional food? Does it really melt down to a thin liquid? And none of the products actually ever did that. The only thing about thin liquid with the jellos is some of the products will have like a thin layer of water or, or liquid on top. But then one of the main things is that a lot of the jellos didn't even pass a fork pressure test. They were firm and nasty. And then when they did squash, they like broke into little bits and, and almost like brittle pieces, but slippery pieces. So, so one of the main risks with jello is is oral control, yeah, bolus yeah. control, and you're going to be like losing all those pieces to, to everywhere. And, um, but it's a wild west. It's like, there was so much variety. Every single jello was acting totally differently. So that's the problem. There's just so much variability and it's, it's a weird thing. What? <laughs> we need a whole we need to just like rip apart jello. jello. <laughs> but you know what? Let's do jello we'll shots to make sure that we all have jello fun. shots and test our jello when we yeah. do that episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> we'll move on. Okay. Okay. So, Laura, we had a question about um, someone's facility having a hard time differentiating uh, soft and bite size level six, uh, easy to level seven. So, how could they kind of navigate through that situation? Well, so um, I'm going to be visual like Karen because when you go on the ITSI website um, and you just type in, it's very user friendly to go on the website. Um, mm -hmm. and, but, the app. and the app, yeah. Um, but what's what, what probably my favorite part of the website is you go to the search column and you say you click it, you type in patient handouts, and they literally have one column mm -hmm. for adult handouts and one column for pediatric handouts. And they're like so many colors and they're so pretty. And what's so great about it is it describes the different sizes, because I don't know if you guys know this, but you can tell um, if you compare the adult handouts to the pediatric handouts that the sizes of the foods, um, minced and moist little bits for um, pediatrics have to be smaller than adults. For adults, it's like the pieces are the space between the fork tines and for peds, it's um, half of that size. And it's just to, to, because of the pediatric trachea being smaller. So um, the soft and bite size, they have like a little, they have the testing methods and everything. And then it has, um, you know, it has to be eight millimeters by eight millimeters, which you're like, well, we don't, I don't talk in mm -hmm. millimeters. How much is a millimeter? <laughs> um, well, they, you, you know, you take your, you take your fork and then it tells you based on your kind of everyday fork, um, how big an eight millimeter by eight millimeter piece is. So that's the, the soft and bite size. And the, um, the interesting part, so you can learn about that and it has, it has kind of like do foods and then it has don't foods, like foods to avoid. Um, and I think that the biggest difference, um, what, what differentiated the easy to chew from the regular, and I think that's almost the biggest differentiation is that they kind of broke it down where foods that are too hard, too tough, too chewy, too fibrous, have stringy textures, those are the ones that they can't say um, a level seven, not every level seven person can handle that. They're just a little more complicated. So um, they have examples of those foods. It's actually the easy to choose four pages long. Um, and so the examples are like nuts, um, you know, steak and pineapple. So it's very, when you think of six 
as being just like soft and a certain size. And, you know, the testing methods are, you know, you can fork mash <laughs> um, versus a seven, which is a food, it's a real food. It's a food food, but it's just not as complicated as like a nut. You know what I mean? So if I didn't answer your question, um, check out the materials, email me or message me and I'll be happy to. I'd also like to it. like That's add like question. on the bottom of the handouts that Laura has, I actually have before like cut off the bottom that has like has a little square that tells you what a bite-sized piece should look like. And then it has like the little fork with like a little measurement. And I've actually cut that off and laminated it and handed it to, to patients to help them like also have a visual when they're looking at foods or when they're going home, like 15, a 1.5 by 1.5. No idea what that looks like, but I know what that square looks like. And I can make sure my food matches that square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can make sure whatever I'm going to give a bite, so the bite size matches that little square. Okay, we're good to go. Let's move on. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How big is a That's the problem with the US, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't use like the metric system. Sorry, don't so, know. <laughs> so here I am with my props. I love props. <laughs> so this is 1.5 by 1.5. And this is the other like super favorite thing I've had from Itzy. Even before we implemented Itzy, I adopted this concept early on where I could just sit with an outpatient. I've just done their video swallow study. They're deciding I'm going to stay on regular foods. You know, I know that I have a little residue. I know that, but I'm going to choose to, you know, to stay on regular foods. And then I can just say, well, you know what, let's, you know, one of the things you could consider is just cutting your food small and, and see your thumbnail right here where your thumbnail is that size, that 1.5 by 1.5. So an adult thumbnail is roughly the size of what will fall through the airway. Um, I actually have airways here. <laughs> this is, or hopefully, hopefully come well, out of the Well, you know what? You'd rather <laughs> have that, say this is a piece of meat that you've cut up. You'd rather have, and these are airways, that's the female airway and the male airway. So you'd rather have that piece of meat fall through and into your lungs. You know, they could go bronchoscopy and pick it out of there. Um, but you'd rather have it fall through your lungs and still be breathing and not ch actually, you know, asphyxiating and choking. So, um, so that's why ITZY made yeah. it that size because... <laughs> That size anyway. falls through the airway, um, but that size does not fall through our baby airway and our, and our pediatric airways, tiny, tiny airways, um, which is why then that's the adult size, but not the pediatric size. Laura mentioned the pediatric size was eight, right? Eight millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. props. Yep. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And then, um, Kristen, you <laughs> asked job, a good question job. about uh, a patient at your facility because you, I believe, have your patient on minced and moist after we clarified. Um, and then you said sometimes they do have puree because then if it's too dry or something of the minced and moist, uh, I think there's a couple things you can navigate. I think what we just said comparing to the softened bite size and regular would apply, right? The handouts, the resources, everything that are there to differentiate the two. And maybe it could look like doing an in-service for your team, which I think would be beneficial for your facility, whether or not this was an issue for you. I think those kinds of in-services even yearly to make sure your team, dietitians, uh, the cooks and everything are on the same page. Um, and then also Karen, I know you were educating me actually about mm. how much like sauces and things matter. Um, I think that could play into here. Do you want to touch on that a little bit when it comes to, uh, that's, yeah, it's like, dry. okay, can I get on my soapbox now? <laughs> so <laughs> my little soapbox, a little soapbox, <laughs> because I <laughs> we actually, um, Beth Israel, they implemented ITSY there in 2016. Like we jumped on that thing. <laughs> so, so we've had lots of years of experience and the minced and moist is just of such a problem. Often they're mincing up things like pancakes and waffles and French toast and all those bread products. When you mince those to the, you know, four millimeters by four millimeters, you're increasing all that surface area. You're really drying stuff out. So Itzy called it minced and moist for a reason. So I think it's easy for kitchens to be like, okay, you want me to mince this? I'm going to mince the heck out of it. <laughs> but then it's like literally, like I've taken pictures of it and I've always shown these pictures in my webinars and stuff, like literally a plate of crumbs. Like, you know, I've, I've had people, I've had people that like, you know, they were on 
Yeah, yeah, it's mint. Um, it's mint. I've had people that they, you know, that they, <laughs> they actually do better on something like soft and bite size that's like nice and moist and has lots of sauce and and, and actually passes a fork pressure test and all that um, than they do with a plate of dry crumbs. You can imagine, you know, it's just like you're going to sip your the your cocoa and you've sprinkled some dry cocoa on top and you're like sipping it and you inhale it <laughs> like you're like inhaling powder. So nobody wants to inhale powder. So, so yeah, so mince and moist, the, the, um, you just, it's gotta be moist and in the soft and bite size, it's gotta be like fork pressure test soft. And then the word cohesive, I just love that word. And, um, and you can kind of describe that also by mm -hmm. just making sure that everything is kind of bound together in a moist, um, nature. And, and we do have an FAQ about sauces, um, in our U S uh, chart there. Um, cause you know, you don't want the sauce to be so liquidy that it's just, you know, separating all out and not actually binding to the food and keeping it moist and cohesive. But, but yeah, be liberal with sauces. And a lot of times head and neck cancer patients, they really need a slippery nature to food. Um, I had a little old lady that was just like, I add olive oil to everything. And I'm like, great, that's you know healthy. It slides down, and you know, so there's you can get really creative with sauces. I, I love that. Yeah, I had someone tell me to take pills with no. olive oil. I'm like, you're not wrong. <laughs> not really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we should go to Italy. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's quickly just show the whole uh, syringe, yeah. letting go of the finger, all of that. Because I know when someone first told me, I was like, <laughs> I held the syringe, of course. Oh, uh, yeah. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when like, you start it? So when do you start so it? So <laughs> you can see, um, you know, holding that to the camera, this is the new um, Itsy funnel. And then my, um, my old um, BD syringe. Of course, the BD 10 ml syringes are going to be pretty easy to find at your hospital and free. You can like snag a bunch and send them home with your patients and stuff. Um, and you can also encourage your hospital to start buying the um, ITSI funnels because they actually give you all the information that you need on here um, where the slightly thick level one there is mildly thick level two, and then the moderately thick or liquidized level three. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm gonna uh, just show you pouring into here. And that they, they made this funnel, um, you know, broad across the top so that it is easy just to kind of pour in one shot there. You fill it up to the 10 ml line there. And who wants to give me like the countdown of uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Of course you can use like your stopwatch, but I'm on the phone right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> ready? Okay. All right. Ready? Go. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, Laura. Probably eight, not five. quite <laughs> perfect counting. Not that fast, okay. but you know. <laughs> That's the real but you world, actually, you know, okay. you want to use like really good, accurate ten, ten. But you know, that wasn't too bad because we are, yeah. we yeah, are in the range of mildly thick. So not too bad with your counter here. And I am using a product yeah. that's mildly thick. So, um, and it is important to test lots of things, like test like the smoothies that you're, you know, teach your the the people that are, they're going home, and then they can test their smoothies that they're making. Um, they can test their liquid medications, like we had at the hospital um, when we first started this we you know made a whole chart for nursing it's like oh did you know that lactulose is a mildly thick liquid great that's good to know so like those liquid medications that they're administering test those um, and the important thing is is you don't need to like test every liquid every day you know but when you're um, really auditing your recipes at the hospital whether you have a smoothie list um, audit stuff with your dietitian and and test all those those supplements that you're offering so then you can say okay well this products this thing that we're giving i'm not going to name, name any products um, this supplement that we're giving is a slightly thick liquid or you know so that you know and and everybody is like we've been saying speaking the same language and testing the same ways and and um yeah. I think when what's just, good too, like my facility thought it was important right. to test our protein shakes. There was like a one for clear liquid for GI. So we're like, well, is that going to be different? And then we tested it yeah. at room temperature and at cold because the nurses are grabbing them out of the cold fridges. But by the time kitchen sends them up, they're usually room temperature. So we and which is which? Which, one, which one's thicker? When it's cold or when 
Cold, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cold. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah oh. thickness, viscosity is temperature dependent. If you've ever heard Dr. Steele touting that over and over, you know, bang that into your head. Too. So it's um, cold, cold toothpaste. toothpaste. <laughs> cold toothpaste would, would be thicker but... than warm you... toothpaste. Ooh. I heard that, in, I heard that oh, analogy. Sure. Like, it's hard yeah. to get out. Yeah. Not that we're eating toothpaste. But, Fun. but, you know, but that's a really important point, and it kind of, um, made me think when someone had brought up a good question about the, um, how do you get to a level two with, um, with the soda or whatever, but it's like, that's the beauty of the flow test because we've not, yeah. before we took a packet of thickener, um, the base liquid of orange juice is yeah. much thicker than, than apple juice. And it would be, if the same packet would thicken so differently and it's temperature dependent and certainly in pediatrics where I am, it's, um, you know, the we're yeah. warming formula yeah. and that's going to make it even thinner. And so, it's it's such a good question, but the point the, the beauty of it is it's not there's no recipe to it. You just you take whatever soda you have, mm -hmm. you take the temperature that your patient likes, you take the thickener that works the best for that patient, and you figure out how much to add. And do you obviously you can't shake a soda, but let's use you know a, the fit your your patient's favorite drink, for example. Wine. Um, Wine. And then and you tailor. Yeah, <laughs> I mean you go for fun, but. Um, and, um, and then, so, so that's it. So instead of thinking of it like a recipe, you're just like, okay, let's, let's tailor it. Um, which is, um, interesting because people think of ITSY as being so prescriptive, but it's, it's actually yeah. so patient tailored, yeah. which is the beauty of it. And I found it really helpful and easy to teach my patients. And if I can't teach the patient, then I show the family member and I even do this in acute care and it takes me five seconds and I, give them usually two syringes, a couple of thickeners as they're goodie bag. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <way. laughs> yep. All right. So I would love to yes. get into our myth busting. I'm probably <laughs> most excited for this portion of it as I think all of you are as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start with Laura. So something that I've heard was that slightly thick is only for babies and pediatrics. Could you expand upon this and bust that myth? Yes. Yeah. So I actually, when I heard that, I heard that people were thinking that I was thinking, oh my God, I hope I haven't been miscommunicating it because when I try to explain slightly thick, I'm really proud of the pediatric, um, the two core pediatric board members um, in the whole ITSE board who fought for that slightly thick. They thought, gosh, there's just such a jump from thin liquids to nectar for these little babies. Um, and so they fought for this slightly thick. And then of course, it's, it's, it's wonderful for adults too, because patients that don't need it to be nectar thick or, you know, level two, um, and um, they needed something between that, that range. So then they, they fought for that level one, that slightly thick, which is a nice range. It's one ml to four ml. And, um, and John Hollihan from Simply Thick said that um, he, he, he got responses recently during a presentation that the majority of the adult patients that these clinicians are working with are on that consistency. So anyway, it was inspired by pediatrics, but it is no, no doubt perfect for adults and pediatrics if deemed successful on instrumental yeah. examination. Yeah, my old hospital, it was a fairly common one for our head and neck cancer. Yeah, patients. where thicker it's is crazy. worse and thinner yeah. is aspirating and then you, yeah. Right. Actually, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like it's a great example of medium. like, like learning globally, like Japan and Australia, they had those five levels of liquid for years before we did. So, so it's, it's finally like, you know, let's, let's learn from the best globally and bring it together for, for all of us. So the slightly thick is, is just a wonderful nature and we can, there is information in your handout about how to make slightly thick using the Vera bar. Uh, we, we created a recipe to, to, get a consistent slightly thick so that you can test it on your videos. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's basically 50, 50, 50, 50 thin yeah. and, and nectar combination. Cause Verabar is not they, ready they can't, to change yeah. their terminology. So they're still doing thin nectar, honey, they can't. So, yeah. um, but it's so easy half and half to get that slightly thick. They just want to make my documentation a little right. extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. fine, Verabar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not bitter. No. Give no. China a good myth. Yeah. Okay. So the next myth. <laughs> I'm like, you're too okay. quiet, Jenna. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? Right, I'm just listening. I'm soaking in all the knowledge. <laughs> okay. All right, China. 
Etsy is confining to the patient, okay. and not patient centered. So let's bust that man. Um, so <laughs> Etsy is it? It's Etsy is a way for us to be able to talk from setting to setting, person to person, professional to professional, about what we're recommending based on our instrumental swallow study. It's not confining the patient to only this specific level, but it's giving you that framework and those helpful hints to help you be able to prepare food, not just in a hospital, but patients don't live forever in a hospital. They have to go home eventually. And if there's anything that I've learned is that patient families often have times with those levels four, five, six, that they just don't quite understand, yet Itsy breaks it down for them in layman's terms. It gives you very concrete directions it gives you very concrete guidelines to go by and it just what's the word i'm looking for yeah what i was gonna say is you're not stuck yeah you're not, it doesn't mean like you're labeled yeah, you're yeah. labeled here and you're stuck there forever and ever until the end of time it's like this is where you are right now here's here's how you know, you can eat at home and feel good about it and safe. But let's try to get you where we need you. Let's try to liberalize your diet. Let's try to get you on thinner liquids. Let's try to get you on more involved yeah. texture. So it doesn't, I, I think that's, that's a big part of the myth. That's I've fun. actually found it to be more liberalizing. The amount of times I had patients either come as outpatient, patient, doesn't matter, that showed me their cup of like a pudding thick liquid. And I was like, excuse me. Yeah, it, it's just nectar? texture. It but, gives, you know, yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Start, it's start a tool that just, it gives you like all the definitions, the descriptors, the testing methods to really stick to a ladder to bring your patients right. up. And, and we've also been addressing this issue within our resources and best practice committee and, and created a person centered care statement. So I really like to always say person centered because it's people are always people before their patients. So, so in terms of person centered care, we made a statement and, you know, just, just rough Roughly, it's that the, the diet order can be still individualized. So you're not changing the itsy label. You're not going to be like, well, I'm going to write you an order for itsy soft and moist bite size. Like, you're not, so, I mean, soft and minced. And, you know, you're not going to make up new itsy terminology. So the, the main thing is that the itsy framework and terminology doesn't change. But you can make exceptions that are outside that framework. So the person-centered diet orders can specify the individual needs within and outside the, the ITSI framework. But now you have the ability to write clear orders to communicate really well with that person and their team. Um, and then you can document really clearly in this person-centered care approach. So it's it, you're not taking away the person's autonomy. We, we've heard that so much. And, and it's we also get away from this concept of like, oh, he's not allowed to have that. Like, no, don't, that's not at all where we're going. He can, as long as it's modified to the level he's on. Or maybe and also he decides to like, no, I'm going to stay on a regular diet. And then we help him and we understand and we give yeah. him clear options of, of all the different possibilities, you know, from all the way from palliative care to, to totally more aggressive approach. Um, but yeah, ultimately the person is making the decisions. We're providing really clear communication, really clear testing methods. Really, you know, it's just it takes the the vagueness out of the old terminology like mechanical soft. Like what is that? <laughs> so so I've also it's just, found, mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think, yeah, I just had a patient the other day that I was like on soft and bite size and they were getting all their trays in the morning. I was like, Oh, how's your diet going? You know, are you okay on this level? And he's like yeah, no, it's perfect. He's like, I just, I really want bacon. I was like, okay. always. <laughs> so I was like, a comment. I was like, add bacon. Like, let me just chew it up really well. I have some water with it. Like, she was like, okay. so always. like you said, I always like, want bacon. Adapted and let's hear yeah. that. Always, I mean, yeah. I want bacon. I want bacon. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Jewish. I've also found like patients like see the numbers and like for a lot of my patients are male and it's like a goal for them. Like I'm going to hit that zero or I'm going to hit that seven. And it kind of also, mm -hmm. I found it to be a little bit of like a goal setting thing and a, a motivation for these patients. So like, sure. I want to get there. I want that perfect score of an eight when I combine my solids and my liquids. And so even then also being patients that are on helping patients achieve their goals that they really want in a safe way.
Yeah, definitely. All right, so moving on to the next myth. <laughs> it's like a drum roll. Okay. Um, the itsy terms are too difficult. Oh, Who wants to take that one? I can, I can start and then, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So the itsy terminologies um, are not too difficult. Um, so the reason why they're labeled the way that they're labeled is for the, in the best ease of translation. So itsy is being translated into so many different languages. It's so exciting, the, the global um, influence of, of itsy. And so in, to translate it, you know, minced and moist translates nicely, soft and bite-sized. These diets say exactly what they're supposed to be. So we're using the word minced, which is, of course, more common in England. <laughs> um, but but minced was better than ground um, in terms of it translating better as well and, and being more of a global terminology. Um, but I love the way soft and bite-sized, it tells you, like, oh, yeah, remember soft? The fork pressure test. bite size. remember your particle size. You know, so it's, it's a choking mitigation with that, that bite-sized piece. Um, and then the liquids, the nurses love the fact that now it's just extremely thick, moderately thick, mildly thick, slightly thick, and thin liquid. It finally makes sense. It's just, it's, that's wonderful. And then I... Like just to tag on your myth, but like difficult also in the sense to like have to learn something new. And well, yes, you're learning something new, but isn't right. that the whole reason why we're professionals? Like we, we in the medical field and doing these things, we love to learn. And why not learn something that's not just going to help us as professionals, but also help our patients, help our patients as they transition through care, because now everybody knows what a mildly thick liquid is. Everybody knows what you're talking about when you say you're soft and bite size. Because I can't say how many times, like, I've had a patient who their HMP or their pre admission screen comes in and it says mechanical soft. And I'm like, okay, what do you mean by mechanical soft? Because my mechanical soft may not be your mechanical soft. But if I get up, if I, but I've gotten reports lately that say minced and moist. I'm like, Yay. you know what you're on. I know. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. I know yeah. what to test for. It. Yeah. And it just makes it very universal for us because if we think about everything else in our field and profession is like, we're slowly trying, or like the PAS, it's communicated across, across disciplines, across fields. Like we all know what that is. This is just, it's, he's just trying to help us get there with diets. Perfect. Um, and I see your question, Kelly. We'll come back to it. Let me just do two more myths and we'll do more questions for anyone else that kind of wants to bump them in before we wrap this up. Uh, okay. So, Laura, this will be for you. Amino acid based formula such as alpha amino will not thicken with cereals. <laughs> Good. So th this has been my, any, anyone that has talked to me in the past like week is probably so tired of me talking about this finding because I'm just like so passionate about it. Um, for adult speech therapists, I hope this isn't for you, um, but I do have props. Um, There's moms out there. If, yeah, exactly. If you're a mom and your baby has had you know, spit up and stuff, and then this might ring ring a bell. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but to, so to to somehow we just like heard something similar to like Jello thins as a you know transition that starts as a solid and then it moves to a thin and then we busted that with um, Itsy. So the um, there's this just like terrible rumor that if a baby is on um, elemental formula like Alphamino. Um, that it won't thicken. And so you just hear that and you hear these big, big time docs say that, and then you just start to believe it. And then you start saying it too. And then you're like, but I've never even tested it before. Um, so I tested alpha amino with um, rice cereal and with oatmeal and it tested and it thickened great. It thickened great at five minutes and then it thickened great at 20 minutes. So the rumor is saying that if you're on this, um, on this formula, you have to use gel mix, which is um, very challenging. It's very temperature sensitive. I mean, gel mix is wonderful because it thickens breast milk, but um, but and that's a lot for a family that's paying money for this elemental formula. And then they have to add gel mix to it. And when they can just simply use a cereal. And if you're wondering what an elemental formula is, that's where I hey. have this yeah. for you. So I came up with this idea, came up with this idea today. So this is a <laughs> strain of amino acids. So this is cow's milk protein, right? If you cut it and break it down and make it a little bit smaller, then you have a partially hydrolyzed milk. So you have maybe your like gentle ease, right? And then if you break it down even more, 
then you have your extensively hydrolyzed formula, kind of like Alimentum, and your gut can handle this small little chain much better than it can handle this chain. And then if you take it down to the actual amino acid, the building block of a protein is amino acid, and you have your amino acid, that's your elemental formula. So that's your Elecare, your Alimentum. Oh, um, I love isn't it. That great? Isn't that a great visual? <laughs> Round of applause. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Where were you when my daughter was oh. on the flux? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so that's, and that's what I'm so glad you said that about reflux too, because that's what's super cool now. Um, there's this big push to get away from um, infants um, for, for medicating infants because infants, infants drink milk. Milk is a base. They're drinking every two to three hours. Their stomach is not acidic. There's nothing acidic that's coming up. If you reflux, that's a problem because that, you know, you could choke and you can aspirate, but the acidity is not the problem. So what's really cool is that a lot of GIs are um, using thickened liquids now um, to um, kind of help add gravity and help keep it down, which is super cool. So you can use, if a patient's swallowing, fine, but they need thickened liquids for um, reflux purposes, you can you can implement it, see, you know, in that way too. Perfect. I mean, like a mom as That's well great. on here. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, last <laughs> myth. <laughs> yeah, thank you, that was awesome. Uh, Itzy promotes the use of thickened liquids and a diet model. Oh, that is not our goal. <laughs> you go, China, you go. <laughs> no. Every SLP wants their patient on a regular solid, regular solid and thin liquid diet. We at Itzy just want to help make things universal. Make a framework that is easy to follow, not just as a professional, but as a patient, a family member. We want to help you understand what your SLP is recommending to just eat everyday foods, eat foods that you like to eat, but that go with your recommended diet from your therapist. And if you don't want to do it, you don't do it. Yeah. But no, we're not saying that. Itzy is not saying that this is the diet that you want to be on. This is the liquid that you want to be on. No, it's everybody's goal. And I'm sure Laura and Karen will agree is that we want you to be an eight. We want you on thin mm -hmm. zero and regular mm -hmm. seven yeah. every yeah. patient. But and yeah, so Itzy provides like you know the framework, the labels, the testing methods for all the way from a thin liquid to a regular diet. You know, because it's with the two triangles. Um, so it's not just providing you with with like puree and minced and moist and soft and bite size. It's providing you with the whole range, and it's clear finally, and it's defined and it has testing methods. So we can now actually provide clear options to people. So if if we provide these options, we're not going to just say you have to be MPO or you have to be on puree, but we provide a range of options with the levels of risk. They understand it, they make an informed decision. You document the informed decision process and they can decide what they want to be on. It's total patient, just like just before. Like and that's the before key is that it's a tool, and it, <laughs> but you are still the amazing clinician that you've always been. So that's, and now you have a great clear tool in every language. You can go in, you can print out your Russian handouts and your, you know, Chinese handouts and your Arabic handouts. And, you know, it's just, the, there's more and more <laughs> translations all the time. So, and if you speak another language, yeah. And just to if you speak another to language that. too. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. That none of you are passionate about <laughs> but if you speak no. another language, definitely contact Itzy to help with translations. We're always looking for more translators. Yeah. What I was also going to add to that is do, do not get frustrated if you have not been, if you've not implemented yet, because there are a lot of people that are tuning in who are just like, God, that sounds good. That sounds lovely to have been implemented. Um, and you get to go in and say, how was your, um, you know, bite size. And, but for, for those of us who are, you know, those of you out there who, whose facility hasn't implemented, that is a big push of, for us. That is a, is a big topic that we talk about all the time. We, um, at the U.S. IRG, we've been developing this kind of mentor-mentee program. So just reach out to us. All our emails are on the ITSE website under U.S. IRG and just tell us, hey, this is my kind of the facility. Can you partner me? Yeah. A school district. 
you know, we have a school district, a, a woman in Texas who implemented <laughs> Etsy for her school district. We were like, oh my God, if you can do that single handedly mm -hmm. in schools, which just seems to just t move slower than anything else, then, um, then we can do this. So we can help, help pair you with something with, with a facility and a mentor, um, to help you advocate for, um, implementing Etsy in your facility. Perfect. And while while we're talking about implementation, I think this is a perfect time to bring on some questions because a lot were about that. Uh, one of the questions I got were tips for a CF training her facility on Etsy, which I feel like kind of ties into that. I'm getting a lot of like, where do I even start? Mm -hmm. So I feel like those are kind of in the same bubble when I talk about in services and training. Um, and I think it was great that you're reminding everyone that it, you guys can be a resource directly. Like there's actually people behind a website. Um, like I know that's really great when I have ever reached out to other SLP companies that have kind of guided me, uh, to acquire their products or their framework. So do you have any other advice or how to conduct a mm -hmm. in-service about this? Um, I guess I'll go first. My supervisor had trays come in from the kitchen that as a team, we all sat down and tested and she guided us and she put together uh, like a PowerPoint presentation from I believe the webinars that you guys mm -hmm. created um, and that she completed. So it was nice to do it as a team because then we're having this dialogue about it. We have someone teaching us about it, mm -hmm. but then we have like that hands-on experience yeah. to really learn that. Yeah, way. like you could you, um, you could go to the USIRG chart that we have and under the webinars um, and maybe have your team just like watch the initial healthcare 101 that just describes the background of it. See, it's a really quick, like I think 12 minute long video. Um, and then maybe watch the testing methods one together. Like you said, bring in, you know, all sorts of things from all different menu items and start really diving into your menu and analyzing it with the testing methods that the 201, so the 201 for healthcare providers uh, walks you through all the testing methods. So if you have food right there in front of you, you can be pausing the video and testing and and just starting to analyze and, and really diving into your menu to be able to start tweaking the menus. Um, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll let you guys jump in, is the implementation guides. You go to the ITSE website under resources, under implementation, there's these implementation guides that walk you through this 12 month long process. So your beginning process is just what you're doing now, the awareness phase. Um, so you're just gathering information and then you're preparing and then you're eventually adopting it. See, but literally that's going to take you 12 months, if not more, <laughs> you know, two years really to fully like kind of iron things out and troubleshoot and stuff. But yeah, go ahead. You guys. Yeah. Um, I know for for our facility, because just because like our system has many different hospitals, we chose champions for each of the sites who really dug into those webinars. We met as groups, talked, really tested before then we like branched out to our sites. And we did um, courses offered once a month for all of our staff members that anybody dealing with food, dietary, clinical nutrition, food service, SLPs, even we have OTs do it too, because they're working a lot on self feeding. But we had everybody come in mm -hmm. and meet with our champions of ITSE for our site, um, who also reached out to ITSE for mentorship as well, just to make sure like what we're doing matches what ITSE is recommending in the framework that they've set up. Um, the mentorship process through ITSE, I mean, I've seen I've like, uh, Laura mentioned our school mentor. She, I met her this weekend at Tisha and she is a rock star. Girl knows her stuff about a school system and getting them itsy friendly. So like, don't be afraid to reach out for a mentor to help you start your process after you've done all your learning and gathering of your data. And um, just to add to that, um, when we, as part of the PEDS US IRG connected and we reached out to different people that were wanting to Zoom with us and ask questions and either were implemented um, and wanted to share with us or um, had not implemented or were implementing and just had questions. The common denominator of the successful groups were the ones who had manager buy-in. So the managers um, and of the feeders, the speech therapist, the OT, the managers of the dietitian, the managers of the culinary group, the food service, you know, they are bought in and then it, and then it happens. So um, it's not, so kudos to that clinical yeah. fellow who's yeah. asking how she can get it off the ground in her 
facility because that's a challenge, but it's not impossible. And um, something that you know I mentioned earlier is that implement the implement the thin liquids. You you have all you need are syringes. So start the terminology with the thin liquids, and then um, and then it will kind of start picking up momentum once people are like, oh yeah, this is easy. This is great. Um, now we just have to get the food. Yeah. Yeah. Get the yeah and you can just even start in your own documentation by doing dual labeling. So, because when your report is going mm -hmm. somewhere else and it, it will follow the patient, you know, all over the place. So when you're saying, you know, if your facility is still, gosh forbid, saying like mechanical soft and, and nectar thick, then, you know, mechanical soft in parentheses, itsy soft and bite size or however you know your mechanical soft might map over to itsy and then when you say nectar thick in parentheses itsy you know uh, mildly thick level two you know so that mm -hmm. so that at least when your report goes on um they'll know what you're talking about and, and you'll just by dual labeling you'll start be you're teaching people um and laura when you said the administrator buy-in um or leader you know buy-in uh, we do also have on our us irg chart um a whole thing um like it's kind of nice fact sheets to hand to your administration so even though you're a cfy you could you know, potentially work with your supervisor and hand these administrator buy-in fact sheets um, to the administrator. There's also a really quick, like 10 minute uh, PowerPoint that the administrator can watch that really goes over the why ITSY, you know, why do you, why do you need to jump on, on ITSY? And, and one of the main things is that ITSY is now the only professionally recognized diet framework um, that's accepted and that's that's recognized by our agencies. So the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics puts out a diet manual as of October 2021, a little while ago, it was the only, ITSI is the only um, professionally recognized uh, diet structure out there. So if you're using something different, you're, you're not in, you know, just general compliance with the rest of the profession and what the professional standards are. Um, it's, it's not mandatory, but it's the only professionally recognized standard. So. Perfect. Awesome. It's so it's okay. <laughs> I know it's getting late, so let's go through quickly a couple questions and then we'll tie this up with a bow. So um, do you guys have any examples of level five mints and moist foods to trial bedside and during instrumentals. I know that becomes an issue for me as well, because it's like we have three cups and that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we have to then, you know, uh, chop up. So do you guys have any other consistencies, you know, on the top of your head that you use bedside? It's, I'm looking at the, the handout right now. Um, this is the pediatric one, um, but um, minced and moist uh, for babies and children. Meat served finely minced and chopped to two millimeters lumped size um, with a gravy, with a sauce, fish, fruit, vegetables, cereal, rice. Mm -hmm. So there are options um, for these minced and moist and they can, yeah. and obviously no bread. Yeah. Want, want, um, bread. <laughs> bread is only a level seven, but on the website, there is um, a recipe mm -hmm. for making a minced and moist um, sandwich, which, um, you know, is super interesting. But there are options of real food, um, not a lot that you can just kind of grab off the shelf at the grocery store to test for your um, swallow studies. So I get that that's a little tricky. But if you wanted to order a tray and then try to use that, that food during your swallow study, um, then, then you can do yeah, it with real it's food. It's such a problem. Oh, yeah. I, know, I was just going to say, it's such I... a problem. You know, our video swallow studies, back when Jerry Logeman designed the Modified Graham Swallow Study, it was with a Lorna Dune. It was with a cookie that had a little bit more substance to it. We've had to dumb that down to graham crackers for years and years and years because that's just what the hospital gives you mm -hmm. on the floors and in your radiology suites. Graham crackers are almost a transitional food. If you suck on it long enough, it is dissolving in your mouth. So a graham cracker is never a good idea if you're actually wanting to know, can this person actually tolerate regular diet? Um, I do like to grab bread for my video swallows to test as well. And then on the floors, you know, for some people, testing bread on the floors could be really risky because it's a high chokeable food. Um, and then, you know, if you're testing graham cracker on the floor to get to minced and moist, 
like out of necessity, yeah, we just kind of break it up, put it in some applesauce and, and give it to, to the patient, um, you know, and put chunks of it a little bit moistened with applesauce and call that a soft and bite size. Like, I don't, I don't believe that that is a good test of soft and bite size. At least your fruit cups, you can actually take for soft and bite size. You can take some of the peaches and some of the, the, the good things that, you know, are cubes, soft cubes and stuff, and, and actually test soft and bite size um, on the floors as well for your bed sides. But, um, but yeah, graham crackers is such a problem. <laughs> so for me, I'm ahead, more on the and step on, stop me if I'm wrong, but sometimes what I'll do is my kitchen, for whatever reason, always has rice. Rice is always made. And I remember me as a kid, I used to mix my rice with sweet and sour sauce. So I have done that with patients, yeah. like just like a quick, like what's easy to grab and probably already ready is rice and sweet and sour sauce. Wow. The patients love it. Wow. I've also done. Um, and no so your rice is, it's soft mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. the, it's less than four millimeters and the mince to moist can be as long as 15. Right. Um, so, you know, even if it's a longer grain rice, as long as it's soft and then you're making it moist and cohesive with that mm -hmm. sauce. So that's perfect. Wow. And that's thicker. Yeah, they say like a thicker yeah, sauce. So yeah, so I use only piece sour together, sauce and rice. Because yeah. cool. the kitchens always have the little deep dipping sweet and <laughs> sour sauces. And then I've also used um, uh, yogurt that have the, the fruit pieces in them to try, try and a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And then you just like on the bottom. It, really mix it all together. And then um, you get a little bit of like where it requires some mashing, but not chewing, but give, but like yeah. makes you have to do a little bit more than just like a regular yogurt. I've done those two things that are just like quick grab and goes um, instead of having to order off the whole trick <laughs> kitchen. I wish our, and this is just on your floor, like if you're in the ICU and you go to your ICU little nourishment kitchen, or do you go downstairs to, to a kitchen? To the, yeah. I go to our cafeteria, cafeteria. but honestly, our, it's like, it's so, for me, like, yeah, it would be nice if it was on the floors, but the cafeteria, you can just like zip down and zip back up. So I feel like it's like, <laughs> yeah. and that is like really easy. I miss that. I miss working at a small hospital where I could just zip into the cafeteria and deal with stuff. Now I'm at a huge hospital. I, you know, to find the cafeterias on the East and West campuses that are like ginormous. I mean, it's, that's, it's a lot harder. So the, the logistics on the floor out there for people, it, it is, it's tough. <laughs> And I will. Well, what I also do. I think it's in them, really in the fridge. So those are always easy to grab and go. Yeah, I wish we had that. Yeah, that's great. Um, I do also want to say that some of our haters and some of the people that are like, oh, it's, it's so prescriptive, um, think that we're literally in fluoro testing 20 different kinds of foods. And we're not. We're using our clinical judgment. What are their chewing abilities? What are their bolus control skills like we're looking we're, we're using our clinical judgment so you don't have right, to test right. the perfect food and say that's exactly what it, we need you know so we're still we're still right, doing right. what we usually do as clinicians yeah, it's perfect yeah. 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 Mouth, yeah that's what i was going to say i was going to say for your clinical bedside swallow for your fluoro for your fees whatever usually i'm getting enough information whether i'm even holding to mbs simp or i'm doing some diced fruit in a yeah, pudding yeah. I can usually figure it out. And then once I talk to the patient and honestly, rarely too, rarely do I need a patient on a puree and not a mince and moist. And then even between that mince and moist and soft and bite size. So usually into that clinical picture is then the patient's yeah. judgment and what they think mm -hmm. would be also appropriate for them and realistic too as well. You know, if I can yeah. kind of teeter between yeah. those two, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely text testing a puree or a pudding. I'm definitely testing a more soft mm -hmm. bite yeah, size and a regular great. solid. Yeah. The last so thing to that, last thing to, so that's so to add to that is thing. to in order yeah. to not be overly restricted after we you know you know give our, our uh, recommendations or our options, um, if you actually test a mixed consistency and you test bread in your fees or in your video, then you won't be so restrictive. Maybe you guys have all decided we're going to have um, soft and bite size. Um, but then we're going to say, but may have minced uh, or sorry, um, mixed consistencies and may have bread because we just tested it on the video and, and they did great. And sometimes they might be able to fully jump all the way up to a regular, but maybe the person gets fatigued a lot and you, 
you know, he's decided to stay on soft and bite size. But, but if you've tested these things um, with instrumentals, then don't be so restrictive and, and actually jump up to these things that are harder. Because typically, uh, mixed consistency and bread are only on the level seven, but, but, um, but test them and don't be so restrictive. Yeah. Um, and is there a specific email you guys know that we could share that people can reach out with questions? Yeah, so the, um, the ITSE, um, there's, of course, an ITSE email. But if you, if for specifically for the United States, it's the USA at ITSE.net. So USA at ITSE.net. And that one is in the handout that, that you'll see on Amanda's link tree, uh, the PDF handout um, under the U.S. section. It is there, too. Perfect. Yeah. So um, a lovely compiled list uh, by Karen for links are in my link tree. And we could even probably share on the Etsy Instagram yeah. as well, or at least within a story. Or and you, you and you're going to make me a link tree. Uh, on uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. When I make Karen her link tree, it'll be there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, because I know there's a couple other questions, but they all have similar themes about implementing and what does, mm. you know, what is liquid eyes and how, mm -hmm. what about a pudding and a yogurt? And, but I, I feel like once the information is deciphered of the resources yeah. that we've kind of touched on, um, and then if there's any further questions, you know, the email, yeah. DMs, everything yeah. is always open. And I think, and I would hope that all of our followers can see that the three of you, and I'm sure everyone else involved yeah. is more than happy to help you and clearly oh. not passionate <laughs> yeah. about it. And right we're not, we're, not, so. nah, nah. We're, we're really <laughs> quiet. It's nine, people. ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we're very wallflowers. Thing, when you wall post flower. this, I'm assuming this uh, <laughs> recording will be posted on your Instagram. Um, we can keep an eye out on comments. And so when we see in the next couple of days, yeah. some, some comments or when, when we plug in tomorrow morning and we see all these, these comments with questions, uh, we can, the three of us can go in there and be trying to answer as many questions as possible. So, um, or just message us on our Instagrams. And yeah, yeah don't forget to answer, don't forget to, don't feel like no one's going to answer you if you Join. DM us on the Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura and I run the back page, so we definitely see it. Don't worry. On the Etsy, the Etsy mm -hmm. Instagram. Yeah. 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 Well, this was okay. great. Well, thank you three so much for your brilliant thank minds. You. I hope that, you know, we will all speak the same food and liquid language at some point. You know, they do have that thing, right? That research takes 20 years. So you said 2013. Years? So yeah. we have more years. 20. Yes. Happy, happy it's the anniversary years. of 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, another 10. Perfect. <laughs> thank all you, right. Amanda. Thank you. thank you for setting this up. And thank you to everybody who carved out time in Gosh. your busy evening to join and yeah. learn and ask questions and listen. Um, so we're here and, and maybe we'll yes. see you again in another. And maybe I will see session. anybody at DRS in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. San Francisco. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Amanda. All right. All right. Bye. Everybody.